Hey guys, welcome to Game Bad. Today, we're bringing a video for our movie weapon series, and today we're going to be covering another M4 build for the movie Extraction, the 2020 movie starring Chris Hemsworth as the character Tyler Rake, and this is going to be his Bravo Company manufacturing CQB11 M4 variant that he uses throughout the middle of the movie. There's a couple engagements where he utilizes this before he switches to the Daniel Defense M4, which we covered in the previous video. So I'll go ahead and link that down below for the previous one if you want to see that. But there are two very different M4 builds that I, I really felt like covering this one as well. So we're going to build this the best we can, and we're going to jump into some gameplay using it and see how good it is in-game here against bots. So backing out, let's go ahead and we'll back out here to the final design for the Bravo Company Manufacturing CQB11. This is basically, again, an M4 variant of the weapon. So let's go ahead now and we will actually strip this thing down to base. And I'll get rid of the camouflage here. Now, this is a very interesting weapon because in the movie, he utilizes this, like I said, in the... I won't spoil the movie for anybody if you haven't seen it, but again, this, is, this was released 2020 on Netflix exclusively. So if you have Netflix, you can check that out. But this weapon he uses has a PMAG on it, so we were limited with options for the PMAG for the M4s. Again, M4s, I have 21 different blueprints for this weapon. So really going through and seeing which one has a PMAG, which does not have a window on it. So here, the base m 4 one has the windowed PMAG. We have a lot of other ones here you can see which have PMAGs, a lot of windowed PMAGs, and some with some stenag mags. So trying to find the right one that kind of fit this. The the second one I was, one of the blueprints I was going to use was was the Thunderclap. However, this one still has a nice, clean steel stenag bag. So I really wanted to go with something with a, a PMAG on there. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we ended up settling for the XRK M4, which I got when pre-ordering Modern Warfare. So there's a couple different blueprints to, that do have a black PMAG on there. So you can go ahead and utilize that. What we're going to do for this, we'll start out for the muzzle attachment. We're going to go ahead and use that tactical suppressor to try and replicate the type of suppressor he uses in the actual movie. So we can get kind of close with this. Again, he really actually, tactical or even lightweight may be even closer. However, it's a little shorter, so you can even go with the mono. There's really, I would say it's not really the tactical suppressor. He uses probably the closest thing you can do is the monolithic or the lightweight suppressor. So for the purpose of this, the suppressor he uses in the movie is actually pretty long. So we'll go ahead and use the monolithic suppressor. It's going to give us the sound suppression, the damage at range. The cons here are going to be the aim down sight speed and the aim walking steadiness. So you can see our different blueprint options. We'll go ahead with the default one here. Now for the barrel attachment, this was a tricky one because Bravo Company Manufacturing has their own unique handguard that they utilize with key mod attachments on the handguard itself. So my first instinct here, we have the 14 and a half inch barrel attachment. Now in real life, I believe the barrel attachment for this is it's 11 and a half inches, I want to say. So the barrel itself is not long. Obviously, it's 11 and a half, I want to say it is. So 14 and a half is a little bit too long. So we want something that's shorter, as well as something that also has key mod handguard on it. So we want the key mod handguard. Um, definitely an issue here trying to find this. So I went with the 14 and a half inch at first. I also wanted to try the zip tie, however, that just makes it even longer. So I ended up settling with the Wages of Sin. So the Wages of Sin here actually has the correct handguard for the most part. You can see we have key mod, we have a key mod handguard, even though you have rail covers here on the left and right hand side, we have the key mod handguard. The only problem is that it's red. So that's one issue with this weapon is that we have the red overlay for the, uh, the barrel attachment here on the handguard. So the 11 and a half inch barrel is what we want however we have the red attachment so you can see just obviously with the xk it looks very odd but we do have the key mod on the left and the right hand side which fits fits perfectly with the bravo company manufacturing handguard here again they use their own custom bcm alpha handguard the cmr alpha handguard closest as we're going to get here we just have the rail covers but they still have picatinny rails on the top and the bottom of the of the handguard as well so we'll go ahead and select the wages of sin and then what we're going to do for our next attachment is, again, similar to our DDM4, we're going to go ahead and put on the TAC laser. Now, in the movie, the TAC laser is actually on the right-hand side of the weapon. We can only get that. We'll go ahead and do the XRK just because it's all black. We can only get lasers on the right-hand side of the handguard. If we go ahead and use the Predator Barrel, you can see with the Predator Barrel, it'll go ahead and put that laser on the right-hand side of the handguard on that Picatinny rail. However, 
with any other barrel attachment, it's going to go on the top of the container rail. So, and I'm not sure really why that is. Even the uh, even the the stock 14 and a half inch barrel, it's going to put it on the top Picatinny versus the Predator. For some reason, it's on the right-hand side. So, again, we'll stay with that. We'll go with the Tac Blazer here. Now, first off, the 14 and a half inch barrel is going to give you the ADS speed improvement. However, the cons are the bullet velocity, which is a very strange pro and con for this. However, that's the handguard we want for the barrel. Now, for the Tac Blazer, we're going to want the aim down sight speed, aiming stability, and the aim walking steadiness. The cons here are the laser is visible to enemies when you're ADSing, so just be cautious of that. We have the black version here with the XRK to fit what he uses in the movie. Now, in the movie, he's also going to use the, we're going to want the four times slip sight because in the in the movie, he's using the EOTech hollow with the three times magnifier. So we'll go ahead and select this. Give us the holographic or the EOTech with the zoom toggle there. Cons are the ADS speed. And again, you can see our different blueprint options. We'll go ahead and select the base version of this. And then for the final attachment here, we have four. So we're going to skip out on the stock. In the movie, they use a, a actual Bravo company manufacturing stock. However, the base salt mod stock is as close as we're going to get to that. It looks very similar. Minor differences there. We'll skip out on all the other attachments here. Again, the magazine is fine. We have a, a base PMAG here without the window, so it fits the weapon perfectly. And for the next attachment, we're going to want he uses a vertical foregrip. So he doesn't use the Magpul vertical foregrip. It's a bit of a different foregrip. I'm not sure specifically which one it is. However, the closest we can get is with the Warpig version of the Ranger foregrip. That'll give us that Magpul uh, vertical foregrip there. It's going to look pretty close to what he's using in the movie. So we'll select that. And again, the pros and cons there are going to be the recoil control and the aim and stability. Cons are the aim walking movement speed and the aim down sight speed. Now, the problem in the movie is that he uses an all black variant of the weapon. And now we have a gold with a red mixture here. So we have black, gold, and red all mixed together. So we need to put a camo on this. So it's not going to be 100% uh, black, unfortunately. I wish we had just a straight black, clean finish like we did with the Medal of Honor Warfighter. However, we have a couple different options here to kind of still cover up that red and the red of the handguard as well as the gold of the base XRK. So I'm actually going to end up going with the smoke. I think it's probably just the best option here to give it some, somewhat of a dark look as well as you could go with pinstripe suit, but I'm trying to cover the red of the handguard as much as possible. The smoke seems to give me the cleanest look for the weapon overall. You can still see a little bit of the red there, but not much. So we'll go ahead and select the smoke. And really that's our final version of the Bravo Company manufactured M4 that Tyler Rake or Chris Hemsworth uses in the movie extraction again 2020 exclusive from netflix so again we have the xrk upper here which makes it a little bit different obviously from the bravo company manufacturing however again you can see with the handguard we have the key mod handguard or the key mod attachments on the left and the right hand side where we have the rail covers there on the left and right but you can still see the key mod slots there which is pretty cool we have the top and bottom picatinny rails we have the p mag we have a stock with the salt mod, which is close enough, to be honest. It's very similar to the Bravo Company manufacturing stock. And we have the suppressor on there. So some minor differences to the movie build. However, this is really as close as we're going to get, in my opinion. Now, for the reticle on this, for the gameplay you'll see, I believe I'm going to be using the Apophis. Very good reticle there. Now, the other option for this, again, you could have used the Thunderclap blueprint. You can make basically the same exact th thing with the thunderclap however again you have to put the the smoke attachment on there or the, the camouflage to try and cover up that red now you could get a little you could get crazy you could obviously put on something like the zip tie that would still look cool but it definitely doesn't have any key mod slots so it looks a little odd you could do the base or even the purist also looks pretty interesting but again doesn't have key mod slots Plus, with the uh, weapon itself, we don't want that stenag mag on there. So, I didn't didn't like the way it looked with the stenag mag there. But so we're gonna go ahead and back out. We we'll go to the Bravo Company. This is the one we just built. Now again, compared to the DDM4, the Daniel Defense M4 that he uses in the movie in the beginning or the opening and the end scenes, you can see it there. That's the one we built in the previous video, which I'll link down below in the description. So you can see some distinct differences. Obviously, this one is a shorter barrel attachment, obviously. Now, also really cool for our operators. Again, Chris Hemsworth and the character Tyler Rake definitely seem to be the Australian accent going with the same accent that he has in real life. So we want an Australian operator that kind of looks the part. So we're going to go ahead and go 
with Wyatt. So Wyatt here has a couple different outfits and I think the, some of the best ones here that represent or look as similar as possible to Tyler Rake's character or Kate Chris Hemsworth's character, Tyler Rake in the movie are gonna be really the first three that it comes with. So we have the Raid Gear, the Remnant, as well as the Sprinter. So I'm gonna go actually with the Remnant, or excuse me, the Sprinter. I feel like it's probably one of the better ones to closely replicate Tyler Rake. Again, we have the hat on there, which is really not what he uses in the movie. However, this is really as close, I think, as you're gonna get. In the previous video, I used D-Day's Arctic Ops because it was very tactical and Delta-esque, but this is probably the better version to replicate Chris Hemsworth's character in the movie Extraction. So we're gonna go ahead and use that. And in the gameplay here, again, we're just using this on Crash. I'm using realism, trying to replicate and play as tactically as possible to try and replicate the way Chris Hemsworth or his character Tyler Rake move around in the movie, trying to move slowly, uh, trying to burst fire and get headshots as much as possible. Now in the movie, he used this weapon mainly in a forest engagement. However, the only forest map we really have in this game is Hill, and I was trying to play in there just get some good footage, but it's it's definitely a small, not a very good map to try and play tactically, very open, so I decided to go back to Crash. Definitely still fits. You see him using this in some urban engagements as well, so it fits pretty well. Really nice weapon from the movie Extraction that Chris Hemsworth uses as the character Tyler Rake. So let me know down below what you guys think of this build. Have you used this yet in Warzone or even multiplayer? Probably better used in multiplayer. Definitely a very good gun. The M4 is still a very underrated gun. I know it had a lot of nerfs in the beginning of the game's life cycle, but it's still very good. Now, the movie is self-extraction again, like I said, came out in 2020 on Netflix exclusively. I believe it was April 24th, 2021. Maybe it was it was in April for so April 24th worldwide, but it was December on Netflix, I believe is what it, when it came out. Um, exclusively to Netflix, and then it was released elsewhere. So, again, in the movie himself, Chris Hemsworth plays basically, uh, I want to say almost like a PMC. He gets hired to go in and extract somebody out of a country, this kid who needs to get extracted out of the area. I, I'll leave it very high level and vague, but he goes in, gets this kid, and then he has to fight his way out of India, essentially going through forest, wood, his team of PMCs is also ambushed and there's a lot of good firefights, especially at the end of the movie. So definitely a really good movie. I would definitely recommend giving it a watch if you haven't seen it. Um, it is actually directed by Joe Russo from Avengers Endgame and Infinity War, all those movies. So really good cast as well. A lot of good modern weapons. We see the Daniel Defense M4, the Bravo Company M4. There's the SCAR in there. We see a Mark 20 SSR version of the SCAR. You also see the Tavor 21, HNK G36. You see the HNK SLA sniper variant of the G36, as well as a lot of other weapons, PKM, SAW, the paratrooper variant of the SAW. So a lot of good modernized weapons here. Very, very good engagements and firefights. Chris Hemsworth is perfect in this role. Again, I'll link the Daniel Defense build down below where we covered in that video. Great support in that video. So I want to do a part two to cover the other M4 since I had a lot of people asking me about that in the comments of that video as well as over on social media. So all my links are also down below for social media, Twitter, Instagram, as well as a link to the Discord. Now, social media accounts being Twitter and Instagram are the best places to get a hold of me. If you're enjoying the content, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It definitely helps out smaller channels like myself grow. And again, if you want to make, get a hold of me, best place to do so are on social media or even on Discord. If you want to join up there, we have a great community. But this is the Bravo Company Manufacturing M4 variant from the movie, extracting the CQB 11 inch, the KMRA specification version using the KMR handguard with that key mod attachment. Let me know down below what you guys think. I'll leave you guys with the gameplay. Till next time, this is Buffer Gaming. Out.